So a couple of videos back, I talked about why the Model D is my go-to analog synth base for like 90% of our projects. After publishing that video, I realized an interesting comparison that would have been awesome to put in that video is showcasing this exact same bass patch. Recreated on other synthesizers. So that is what we're gonna do in this video. Now, disclaimer, obviously you cannot completely recreate this sound out of a completely different synthesizer because there's inherent differences to the um, the filter, the oscillators, all that stuff. So hopefully in this video, you'll be able to pick that up because some of them will sound similar while others will definitely sound different and have clear um, sonic characteristics that come through that are differences to each other. If you're new to synthesis or getting into synthesis and want to see like a, a clear cut example, hopefully this video will deliver that for you. So let's get to it. So to start out, I made a quick little beat on the MPC one with the bass line. Nothing crazy, real simple. Uh, in terms of the actual patch, again, simple bass patch, everything's in 32 foot mode. Some of the synths that I'm gonna use also only have two oscillators, so that'll be a difference as well. The first oscillator is in sawtooth mode, and then the other two oscillators are in square wave mode. And then the first oscillator is maxed out in the mix. The other two are around six or seven. I do have the external volume gain feedback type of thing happening, so it's giving it some extra bite. And then the cutoff, you know, it's the typical keeping it low with a bit of contour to give it some shape in there. And I'll probably, I'll try to recreate some of the ADS curves, ADSR curves <laughs> that are in this. Uh, but again, it, it won't be exact because they're inherently different architectures. Okay, let's do it. So the first synth is the Novation Peak. It is a personal favorite of mine. Got three oscillators. It's also got eight voices, which we will not be using the eight voices. We're going to modify that and stick to one voice so it's the same character. Personally, I like the filter as well. I think it's really great. It's got insane reverb and effects and all that, which we'll keep those off initially. So first things first, we need to make it monophonic voice. Poly, mono, mono legato. Can't remember what mono legato is. We're just gonna go with mono for now. So as you can see, there's only one voice that is being used or the same voice. So it's the same three oscillators that are being triggered over and over. So when you get to 32 feet, uh, let's go 16, 16, 16. And then we could actually drop this in another octave as well. So that would technically be 32 feet. So we got that going on. First one is a sawtooth. So now we need square. Also, this needs to be maxed out. And we got about 60, 70% or so. Okay, and we got that, great. We got a 24 dB filter. We're gonna drop this down. Turn up the volume a bit. Gonna give it some overdrive. Let's go to the Model D real quick. So this needs some envelope. And it's pretty quick with a decent amount of decay or so. I need to give some release. Let's hear the Model D. Back to the peak. In terms of glide a bit, because the glide is around five or noon on this, which might be too much. So Model D. Peak. Uh, let's take a step further, go to oscillator, let's go, let's drift. Turn up the drift a bit. Oh, you know what I forgot? To detune. So, oscillator two. Let's go up a bit. There. Play the beat now. So here is the Model D. Okay, and now here's the peak. I 
I find it extremely fascinating how you could take the same principles and get very different sonic characteristics about it. Now, if you can't hear the differences between the sonics, that's okay. It just takes time to develop your producer sense, your, your musicality and hearing the sounds of different instruments. It's like when you hear various guitars. If you're not used to picking out different acoustic guitars, then they could all sound the same to each other, essentially. But the more your ear gets tuned to it, the more you hear the different guitars and you go, oh, that's got more high end, that's got more mid range, that's got like a little more sparkle. There's a lot of different characteristics that can come through on, uh, on instruments. And I think this is a great example of that. Model D. And... Novation. I forgot to turn on the glide. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, too much. Yeah, uh, now to just take it one step further, we're going to throw some distortion on here. Novation Peak, moving on. Next up, we have the Behringer Neutron, which is a dual oscillator, multi-mode synthesizer. It's got two envelopes, also has an overdrive as well. Uh, it's a nice little patch bay if you want to get into your rack. You can just make a patch directly on the panel as it is. So to kick things off, we need to go down to the 32 mode, 32 foot mode right there. We're going to mix the oscillators like so. So the first one has a bit more than the second one. What does that sound like? Okay, now we need a sawtooth on the first one, which is about like so. And then the second one is a square, which is already there, which I'm not sure where it should be for this. I think about right there in the middle. Okay, now. We need to set up the, the filter and also the envelopes. Let's do envelopes first. So envelope one is the amplitude. So the decay, drop that to the mid or so. Let's keep the sustain up-ish. Okay, now let's drop the filter. Drop the resonance also. I think we need to turn it up. Got a little click going there, which I think is this. There we go. Took out the click just by upping the attack on envelope one a bit. So envelope depth here, I think is connected to envelope two. Let's find out. Yes, it is. So envelope depth connected to envelope two to connect or to control the uh, the filter. So we want a pretty fast attack as well. The decay is pretty short. Uh, I guess we'll drop the release somewhere around here. Drop the sustain, there we go. I think the sustain on the first envelope needs to drop. Bring the decay up. So there's a little more push and give to it. Also, is overdrive happening already? I think it is. Yeah. So that's been happening. You know, I think we'll probably just keep that up. Okay, what are we missing? I think these are slightly detuned as well. Oh, are these synced? Oh, they are. Whoops.
Yeah, oscillator sync means that they are dead synced together, so there will be no variation of pitch from the first oscillator. So you want to uncheck that if you want to get that nice detuned fat spread. A fat spread. Let's hear the Model D. And Neutron. Isn't that fascinating how that low end is just, it's distinctively different. The similar patches, but that low end has such different character. Oh, what about Glide? I forgot about Glide. Where is the Glide on this? Portament to time. Oh wait, Glide right here. No, that's sample on the hold, slew. Isn't this? Yeah, port of time is Glide. I find that so incredibly fascinating and why synthesis, even in its basic form, like this is very basic synthesis, is extremely fascinating to hear what type of results you get. So this is with the beat. So I think one question could be, well, they're both Behringer synths, so they can't sound that much different, right? It's like the same type of guts that's going in there, right? Well, clearly, from just this example, it's definitely not the case. Obviously, these are different oscillators, and it's two of them, and they've got the whole the, the shape changing, width changing type of stuff. So again, they're not the same synth. I feel like it's very easy to just look at the surface and be like, oh, it's just a different plate with similar guts that are in there. And yeah, there is similarities, but the differences actually make, uh, it's a hair, beard hair, whoops. The subtle differences in the architectures actually make huge differences sonically, at least to my ears, they do. Cool, let's uh, move on to the next one. The Korg Minilog OG Edition, a modern classic. This is one of like the first affordable entry-level analog synthesizers that came out recently in like modern times of this glorious era of synthesizers. So I have an uh, initialized patch. It's also four voice polyphony. So this only has two oscillators as well. The XD has three oscillators, two analog and a digital oscillator. So we need to drop the octave. Let's bring both these up. Drop oscillator two down a bit. We need a saw wave on the first one. Square wave on the second one. Now, Pitch of the second one needs to go. Cut off. Bring it down a bit. We do have two envelopes as well that we get to work with. So obviously the first one, we're gonna bring this stuff up, bring the sustain up, release. That might be too much. Like so. So now we need to bring up the envelope in interval or in generator, wherever it is, EG int. <laughs> uh, bring that up a bit so we have something to work with. The decay and sustain, decay goes up, sustain goes down, release up a bit too. Cool, we also need to put this into legato mode. Oh, and mono, it's right here, my god. Okay, so yeah, this volume is pretty low, we need to up this. By the way, something I haven't talked about at all in this video is I am running everything through a Mackie analog board off to my side, which is then getting hit with a little bit of transformer love from a Burl B32 into a West Audio Dione and Prometheus that also have a little touch of saturation in there as well. It's not drastic or anything, but it does help sweeten it just a bit. But it's also stuff that you do naturally in a mix anyways. Let's hear this with a beat now.
Let's mute that and hear the Model D. Oh, that's considerably louder. I turn this up now. A little clarification here. I do typically like the Korg Minilog in pad, chord, uh, arpeggiated type of scenarios. So for basses, I typically don't reach for it. It's obviously usable. But obviously I like the Model D better and it takes up less of a footprint on my desk. Again, it just goes to show you how the differences can exist with these things, like different architectures creating very different sonic palettes between them. Let's move on. It's about that time where I have to ask you to subscribe and ring the bell and leave a comment and hit the like button, all that stuff, because the great algorithm in the sky requests it. And if you like this type of content, then it definitely helps the channel. So, the Arteria Micro Freak. Whew, that's a little loud. Oh, I forgot to turn this down. Okay, Micro Freak. An amazing synth, uh, it's all digital except for the filter. The filter's analog. I think that's the only thing that's analog. Correct me if I'm wrong. Awesome synth, it's based on immutable instruments. Uh, braids? <laughs> Can't remember. Yes, great synth if you haven't uh, had a chance to play with one of these. <laughs> Sorry. So there's a ton of modeled oscillators inside of this. So we need to find the uh, virtual analog synth, I believe is what it's called. The analog. I don't actually know what is in those virtual analog oscillators, so we're just kind of getting something approximate. It's kind of saw-ish, saw square-ish type of thing. This envelope right here, which is a ADS, uh, the decay shares the release, which is actually very similar to what the Model D is like. Also can share with the filter here. Something like that. So this is what it sounds like with the beat. Let's hear the Model D. So this is an unfair comparison because we got three oscillators right here. This is a dedicated unit. This is modeling uh, via digitally what this might be doing somewhat. It's not, it's not a one-to-one -one model at all. It's just, it's, it's in the ballpark on there. And uh, the Micro Freak is amazing and does things that the Model D couldn't even dream of doing. But that's not the point. The point is to hear some differences that happen when you try to do the same patch uh, for synthesis, you know? And it's obviously a different character. The Sequential Take 5, one of uh, Sequential's latest offerings. Five voice polyphony, analog synth. It's got two oscillators right here. 
Uh, obviously multi-shapes, it's got a great filter, lots of modulation points and things and stuff. Uh, honestly, I think it's a great synthesizer, great analog keyboard. So in it patch, you go down, negative two, makes a basic patch. So obviously with this, we only have two oscillators. Let's drop them an octave. Okay, now the first one needs to be saw, roughly saw, and then this needs to be square. This is not up yet. So you're only hearing one oscillator at the moment. Let's crank that. Bring oscillator two about 60% or so. Let's go unison as well. Great, now glide rate goes up. Now we need to drop the cutoff. Drop the glide a little bit. So envelope one automatically is mapped to the filter to begin with, and envelope two is automatically mapped to uh, the amplitude. So we want short attacks on both of these. Sustain maxed out on envelope two. This glide is still a little too much. It's interesting how the different glide values between synthesizers operate. Like this has a lot of glide right away. Um, whereas like the Model D, that's about 50% up. You know, it's interesting. This also has an overdrive, which is delicious. Since this is kind of an overdrive, we're gonna keep that in there. Did I detune this? drive up. Play it. It's interesting also how the note triggers are a different from synth to synth as well. The way it like legato plays. I had to crank the volume a little bit. Let's turn up the vintage knob. Let's hit the model D. just something about the Model D being so loose and it's like the timing, the envelope timing and the filter and the oscillators. It's just, it has such a unique character to it. Go back to the take five. Take five sounds great. I mean, it's a really nice keyboard. This is with unison off and glide off. And back to take five. Very fascinating. I have another sequential synth sitting right next to me, the Pro 3, and we're gonna load that up as well. So the Pro 3, again, another sequential synth came out uh, last year, I believe, year and a half ago, something like that. It is a three voice 
synthesizer, you know, with the mixer, multi-mode filter, uh, several different envelopes, a lot of modulation possibilities, got like three envelope, uh, three LFOs, and the third oscillator, I believe, goes uh, into wavetable type of stuff as well, or has the option for wavetables, so a lot of flexibility. You know, in a lot of ways, this kind of looks like an evolution of what the Model D is. Let's find out if we can recreate that particular sound. So the shortcut, I believe, is down latch. Yeah, down latch is a basic program. We need to drop these octaves. So we'll go saw. Second oscillator. Drop it down. Square. Detune it. So with the filter, we have a four pole OTA and a four pole ladder and a two pole uh, OTA. And we're gonna go with the ladder filter. Oh, I forgot the third oscillator. Sorry, let's also add this. Shape wise, we want it to be, let's go square to, or pulse, yeah. Yep. Put the glide on. About that much glide, that works. I will have to change that octave in the MPC. Uh, we need some envelopes in here. So let's start with the amplitude first. Max out sustain. Okay, now let's drop the filter, open up the filter. Maldi. to the Model D. can I say? <laughs> I think audio wise, it's extremely clear to me, like the differences, uh, even though they're in the same ballpark, you know, they're playing like the same position. They are definitely different style or different characters that are coming through in there. So, so fascinating. I mean, this is a fantastic synthesizer, the Pro 3. Like I still prefer the Model D when it comes to the bass sound. I, it just has this like, gummy rubber bandy thing going on that's just so fantastic uh whereas the pro 3 is also a fantastic synthesizer and i could absolutely make a bunch of different bass sounds out of it that would totally work 
But given the option, I'm definitely, I'm still pulling the uh, the Model D out for that. In general, though, I mean, the, the amount of modulation, flexibility, effects, all the different things, the, the different types of patches that you can program on the Pro 3 is astounding. So I hope that's obvious and clear. Like, I, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, one's clearly better than the other, and, like, this is so much cheaper. It's like, that's not what this is about. It's showing that the different architectures can produce such different characters, even though the patches are relatively similar to each other. Uh, I, that, that's what I'm trying to do with these um, comparisons. All right, moving on. We have the Electron Analog 4. It is a personal favorite of mine because it's got four voices that can be uh, or multi-timbral, so four separate sounds that can be like these four monophonic synths all in one box. Even has external outs for each one, or track one, track two, track three, track four outs, which is badass, honestly. So you can multi-track this stuff via the analog domain. Uh, you, it does share the effects though, so the delay, reverb, and all that is a send, so you can't um, have separate ones per track on that. And you can also just use one patch as a four voice analog synth. The initialize is uh, basically hold this, you go clear, track one sound clear. I do have polyphony already set up right now. I think we should drop the tuning. Fine tuning, we'll detune it down just a little bit. Wait, there's detune right here. Linear detune, fine tune. Um, uh, I'm not 100% sure on what those changes are. Let's go oscillator two. Same thing, bring this down to 24, two octaves lower. We'll just fine tune, bring up the level. Actually, let's max out the level of first oscillator. This needs to be square. What a fantastic sounding synthesizer. Just right off the get, we're gonna take out the polyphony on this. I do love me some Electron gear. Filter, let's bring this filter down. What's really nice is this has two filters on there, which I'm, man, I, I love a two filter type of setup. And it has overdrive as well. Which is cool because you can overdrive it really bad. You know, like, not bad, but you know what I mean, like really disgusting, and then take that top down as well. Like so. I think that's awesome. Turn that overdrive back down to zero. Let's put the tracking up all the way. We have the depth for the fil uh, the, the envelope as well. Let's go amplitude. We need some release. Let's bring up the sustain. Took off a little bit of the attack, just a smidge. Okay, now we go to the other envelope. This one needs a long decay, short sustain, or a small sustain, longer decay. Uh, it's too low, actually. Let's go up an octave. <laughs> okay. Let's do the overdrive a bit. Pick off some of the key tracking. set up glide on here is the question. I forget, I think Portamento glide and all that stuff is operates differently because of the sequencer with the analog four. So I think we're gonna be out of luck on that one. I do love that overdrive. Let's hear the Model D. Back to the analog four. 
Once again, very different yet similar sounds between the two, and also a different feeling of timing and all that. I think it's been interesting hearing how each synth kind of responds to timing on MIDI notes, because there's definitely some loose playing that's going on in the MPC-1 that I did uh, on purpose to a degree. So we can hear some of those discrepancies, because like the tighter the timing is on some of these envelopes, the more obvious that it's going to feel and come across which again affects the uh, the feeling, the emotion that you get from some of these instruments. This is actually our latest acquisition, the Behringer ARP 2600. So far, I really like it. <laughs> I've never had any experience with an original ARP or anything like that. I've had software emulations before, but I've never truly understood what it meant to program an ARP 2600 before. So it's been an interesting learning curve getting this and kind of going through the steps of learning how a ARP 2600 operates but this will actually give a pretty good comparison i think with the um with the model d because you know we got three vcos and they're they're fairly loose actually let's start out so first one needs to be saw which is already i believe saw by look at this never mind it's pulse we have to patch that saw into vco1 then pulse and vco2 great and we need pulse from vco3 I mean, I could have just swapped them around and that would have been the exact same, but I'm doing it this way. We need a little bit of Portamento, which I believe is already there. Also, we need all these oscillators. So first oscillator, great. We need a bit of this oscillator. Oh, one thing that's interesting though, is like, I feel like the last 25% feels almost like um, exponential with these sliders, so I don't know if that's just a Behringer thing. Might be. Let's detune a bit. Portamento is already on here. like how this synth sounds also it only goes up to like 10k for the filter so it kind of naturally cuts out some of the abrasion from the top end all right some of this is already kind of pre-programmed already because i was messing around with it oh you know what we could do also is patch in the preamp to try to simulate some external volume gain we'll see about that yeah so how it's currently set up with this the regular ar envelope is controlling the amplitude so if we take out the ADSR curve. So now the filter is being controlled by keyboard pacing, and that's it. And yeah, it's already got like a nice low end. You can just feel where it's at. So let's adjust this ADSR for the filter. We want some decay time, sustain pretty low, a little bit of release. Maybe a lot of release. Let's turn down the filter. Bring this up a bit. Let's hear this. Okay. Model D real quick. Okay. Back to the ARP. Okay, we're gonna patch out the VCF, put in the input of the preamp. Take the output of the preamp, put it into the VCF mixer or the VCA point. So yeah, no volume. Get some distortion. 
distortion in there. Let's hear that. Just straight up character for days. Let's hear the Model D now. Yeah, so this distinct characters that are different. Obviously, the preamp's gonna add like a lot of tone distortion type of stuff. Let's switch back. Back to the arc. to this curve. I hope this has been useful, at least to someone. If there's one person out there that finds this information useful, then success. I think I gotta end the video here. I mean, I could have bust out the modular, but we're already so many cents in. I, and I, again, I think this video is already ballooning past what I wanted it to be. Um, I was hoping for like a nice short, like maybe 15 minute get in all these things, but uh, I have a feeling I've been recording for a couple hours, so yeah. I got to cut it here. Thank you so much for watching and going on the journey. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you like it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment below. All that stuff, it helps with the algorithm. So it helps us be able to make more content for you guys. If you'd like to purchase any of these, you can use our affiliate links down below as well. That does help out the channel. Affiliate disclaimer, we do get a cut, but it's not additional fee to you or anything like that. But just to let you guys know. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to making more content in 2022. Memes and I have a ton of music planned. And hope you guys stay tuned because uh love to share it with you guys. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Deuces.